is not Sam Wrestling. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. So, here we are at the WWE Performance Center with Bianca Belair. Yeah, yeah, the Bianca Belair. The, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the Bianca Belair. <laughs> uh, what's going on, Bianca? What's the haps? You know, just having a great day today. It's going to be a good day. Yeah. The first two-hour premiere on the USA Network yes. for NXT. So, I'm just excited for today. You know, you have a very... Uh, Loyal and rabid online fan base. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't know if you are aware of that, but you should be very proud of that. Oh yeah, they call themselves the the Estes or the Estate. Yeah, they they, they have my back all the time. You, I've, no, I, I you know about I that, have, right? Yeah, no, I've I've, yeah, I've heard a thing or two. You don't mess with them. N- apparently not. Kind of compare them maybe to the Beehive. Yeah, they, no, it's tough. They're brutal. It's yeah, they're, oh yeah, they are. Oh yeah. Yeah, they are. No, I still, uh, <laughs> I still hear from them to this day. Um, well, what has life been like for the last nine months you know you you main evented 10 months i guess because mm-hmm. it was royal rumble weekend that you main evented takeover you kind of i feel like introduced a lot of people to who you were and what you were capable of how do you feel like life has changed since then Ooh, uh i feel like everything that has happened has happened the way that it was supposed to happen everything even comments people make Sure. Yes. You know, because along with success, you're going to have people who have their opinions. Right. But it's always fun to prove them wrong. <laughs> That's the best part of the job. But no, I think that everything that, that has happened is supposed is what was supposed to happen. You know, I have I walked into the performance center three and a half years ago. I've learned from the the ground up, and I've worked hard. I have deserved everything that has come my way, and I have proved to everyone every step of the way that I'm the EST of NXT. So that's what Bianca Belair does. Have you been an athlete since, I mean, since when? When did you start kind of working out and? So I started track when I was five. My parents realized uh, that I was just a kid that never stopped moving. I, I, my parents had this door that had these bars on it. I don't know why, but I used to climb up the door. I used to climb trees, and my dad, my dad told my mom, we need to put her in something before she, she kills herself. Like, she needs to put this energy into something. So they put me into track and gymnastics. <laughs> so I've been doing track and gymnastics since I was five. And because of my parents, I grew this love for sports. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what I've done my whole entire life is sports. I've played almost every sport in the book. I've done track, I've done gymnastics, I've done tumbling, I've done basketball, I've done soccer, I've done CrossFit. I did some cross country. That didn't last very long. <laughs> um, <laughs> but You're more yeah. in the energetic bursts? Yeah. Than the... Yeah, a 10-minute run and I'm done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely make that. Yeah, yeah. That's what they say in, like, uh, people who just do, like, weight training and stuff. It's like anything that's reps is cardio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Have you ever gone through a period where you took time off from exercise? And I don't mean like a day. I mean like yeah, I extended. Did. Yeah. So I went to college. Uh, I was recruited as one of the top five hurdlers in the nation. Went to University of South Carolina. Things didn't work out there. Went transferred to the, uh, Texas A&M University. Things didn't work out there, and that's when I needed to take a break. And I came back, I went back home to Tennessee, and I took a break for about a year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want to run track anymore. I've been doing this since I was five. I'm burnt out. I have other issues that I need to to deal with. And so I took a year off, went back home with my family, dealt with those issues, and then I decided I I want to walk onto the track team. And that's what I did. I walked onto the track team, earned back a scholarship. But I took a year off then. And you weren't training for that year? I was not training so for that year. So you just, year. after a year, walked back on, and they were like, oh, no, we'll have you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I had to earn my way back on. Of course. So through fall training. When I first walked on, I didn't get a scholarship initially. Like, mm-hmm. I went through fall training. I went through a year of competing, and that's when I earned a scholarship. And then after that, after track, I went into CrossFit because I, I missed the, the competitive environment. And then I got hurt. Uh, I have intercostal costochondritis and shifting rib syndrome. My ribs pop out and my rib popped from my sternum. And so I was out for about a year. And 
months, I actually got my first tryout while I was still recovering from that injury, and I didn't think that I was going to be able to do it. And then they called me for a second tryout, and I almost contacted them and told them that I couldn't do the tryout because I didn't think that I could get through it. But I was like, hey, what do I have to lose? So came to the tryout and just been doing recovery ever since. That's amazing. So where did they, you, did you call them or did they call you for a tryout? So I was doing CrossFit and I used to make my own outfits and I wore these crazy like big bows and tutus and so I really stood out. And Mark Henry saw a video online of me competing and I was, it was one event where I grabbed the microphone and I was just talking to the crowd and he was like, hey, have you ever thought of being in WWE? And a couple of weeks before that, I actually went online and looked at it. It was just ironic how it all just, just all came together. And he told me, you know, I can get you a tryout, but that's all I can do for you. Yeah. So he gave me the information and I had the phone number of who to call and, and I called a lot until I finally got a response. And then that's so it's something you really invited. wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you grow up a wrestling I, fan? I didn't. I only watched wrestling because my, my brother watched it a lot uh -huh. growing up. And so we used to fight over the remote. And when he won, and I had to watch wrestling. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the only really time I really watched wrestling growing up. And then once he left the house, I didn't really watch it a lot. So when I came in to the Performance Center, I didn't really know a lot about the history of mm -hmm. the business or know a lot about wrestling other than what I watched when I was younger. So I honestly didn't know much about the I've been playing catch up and learning about the history of the business and trying to learn this skill at the same time for three and a half years. So did you just look at, at, at kind of WWE and wrestling as like something where you could take your athleticism and turn it into a lifetime career? Because I would imagine at some point when you're running track, it's like you either go to the Olympics or once school's done, it's yeah. like there's not a huge industry of let's go to this professional track meet, right? Yeah, so after college, my, my coach was encouraging me to try to go pro. But I had been running track since I was five. Like I was like, I'm burnt out. I'm done. I I've, did it. I've, I've accomplished what I want to accomplish. I can walk away and be completely fine with it. Missed the competitive environment. Found CrossFit. Got hurt. Was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I feel like my whole life I've just been searching. And I've, you know, I, I had a job in Atlanta, and I kind of just settled into, okay, this is my life. But yeah, I just but I that thing where like I can just sit here. I don't have to think about anything. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, be miserable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I'm the type of person where like I just want to use my full potential. And I knew that I'm very talented. I'm athletic, and I I'm very creative. And and I saw I was watching at home, and. I was flipping through the channels, I saw it, saw Raw, and then Total Divas was out at the time, so it was like the, the women were getting a lot of, um, a lot of, I guess, attention. Yeah. And so, and I started thinking about it, I'm like, I really feel like that could be perfect for me because I can utilize every single part of me from my physical capability, my athleticism, my creativity, I make my own gear, I, I literally, like, I literally can use every single part of my potential and I feel like it was a perfect fit for me and it was something that kind of found me and we found each other and I've grown a passion for it and now I can't see myself doing anything other than this right which is crazy you know, yeah going yeah from not even no really knowing about it or really paying attention to it to now is something that I can't see myself not doing yeah I'm always so interested in that especially with like athletes when you have this life plan where it's like, this is what my life is dedicated to. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, you're still young. You're in your twenties yeah. and you're like, wait, <laughs> like I got to change course now. Yeah. And the whole thing is going to look different. You find this other thing. And I think it's amazing. Um, well, look, good luck with everything. I mean, you, <laughs> you, you, you opened, you had a, an incredible performance opening uh, NXT on USA. Thank you. You know, and obviously there's going to be a, a lot of room for more uh, opportunities Oh, as yeah. that comes around, I mean, you could probably talk to your husband if you get around to it. Maybe you could see if he could stop, like, uh, staring uh, death holes <laughs> through me every time that he sees me. Does feel threatening at times. He's a, he's a big man, and I'm not, you know, sitting at a table away from everybody. I'm actually yeah, you know, face to face, and that's that's a different deal for me. Yeah, you know, it's a couple of things you don't mess with when it comes to him. It's his cup. In me. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll remember that it about might, the cop. It might, yeah. it, might, it might take a while. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the story. <laughs> I'm a little you bit more forgiving. The story you just told also explains why I had to uh, 
had to sit down with Mark Henry too. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, well, that I, makes I have, sense. I have now. a great support system. You really do. Yeah. You yeah. really do. And yeah. congratulations on that too. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for talking to me. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for having of me. Of course. Yeah. <laughs>